We'll start by registering the VNXE3200 VASA provider with vCenter. Clicking on Data Stores, going into the Management area. Under Storage Providers, we'll click to add a new storage provider. Provide a name, as well as the URL that points to the VASA provider running on the array, and the appropriate credentials. Once we click OK, the provider will be registered with vCenter. We can click on the provider and the registered arrays to see model information as well as the capabilities of the underlying storage array itself. Next, we will create new VM storage policies based on the capabilities of the array that we've just registered with vCenter. Click to create a new storage policy. The first policy we will name production. When we click next, we will go in to edit the rule set based on the capabilities of the VNXE. First, we'll choose a RAID type. Next, we will choose a drive type. And then click next. Here we can see compatible data stores. We'll click next and then finish. We'll click to create our second VM storage policy. This one we'll call development. In our rule set, we again select our provider. Our first capability that we will select will be drive type. And here we will select the capacity tier. And then for our next capability, we will indicate that fast cache should be turned off. For our third VM storage policy, we will create a policy called archive. In our rule set, again, we select our VNXE provider. And our capabilities will be based on drive type, again, capacity, and fast cache turned off. We will also select a RAID type and indicate RAID 6. Now that we've created our three new storage policies, let's go create a data store. Click New Data Store. Select VVOL as the type. And then we will select the storage container that backs this data store and mount it to the appropriate hosts. Once our new data stores are created, we can filter our view and look at just our VVOL based data stores and then click into each one of them and examine their properties, including their protocol endpoints and the capability sets that underlie those data stores. Now that we have new VM storage policies and data stores created, let's deploy a new virtual machine. We'll deploy from template. Select our template from the inventory. Give the virtual machine a name. Select its compute resource. And when we select storage for this virtual machine, we'll be selecting from a list of available storage policies. So you'll see the three policies that we created earlier. And as we select each one, we see compatible data stores that meet the criteria for that particular policy. In this case, we'll select the engineering data store and click finish. Next, we'll select a virtual machine from the inventory and demonstrate migrating it to a new storage policy. In this case, we have a virtual machine that's on the archive policy. We'll select change storage only. And when we click next, we're going to select a new VM storage policy. In this case, we'll select production and then choose a new compatible data store. Click next and then finish. And when we refresh the interface, you'll notice that the storage type has changed to engineering.